Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today we are talking about dialogue specifically, which I know we talk about in the 60 day novel writing challenge also, but I want to break it down a little bit further today even because I have been doing a lot of just analyzing what it is about dialogue that separates like amateurs from pros to me. And so I have really, I think narrowed it down to three big main things that makes dialogue really just read well and read like it's written by a professional. And I found a way to make all three things start with the same letter. So I think that makes it extra legitimate. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to tell you guys like the three big secret keys to how to make your dialogue flow really, really well. And so they all start with the letter P. <laughs> That's today is brought to you by the letter P, I think is where I was going with that. Um, anyways, so the first one is personality. The second one is the peripheral actions. And the third one is that there needs to be a plot slash purpose. I kind of fit two of them in there, actually. So to start with, any time that we're writing dialogue, one of the most important things that we can add in there is the personality of the characters. And I would actually say that if it is lacking that, then the dialogue in general is just lacking. We need to be able to see in the way that people say things and what they're saying. We should be able to see who they are because that adds such a big dynamic to any scene that we're writing that has big parts of dialogue. So, you know, if we have a couple of characters in a group setting having a conversation, we should be able to see that one of them is kind of the moody broody type because he's not saying much at all. You know, the characters have to like pry information out of him. He doesn't volunteer anything. Whereas we could have somebody who's a mega extrovert and we see that through the excitement that's in their tone as they speak. And just the fact that they're super eager to like contribute and be the center of attention. Or we could get the, the sense that somebody is like a really helpful character and really cares about their friends because they're being supportive in everything that they say. Even no matter what the conversation is about, you can slip the elements of that in where, you know, somebody says something and the really helpful person just tends to be very agreeable and like support what other people are saying. So the second thing that we're going to get to after personality is having peripheral actions going on in the background. And these two really go together. But I would challenge you guys in every single scene that you write, like without exception, to have something happening at the same time as your characters are speaking. So we don't ever want to be in the situation where it just feels like your characters are standing with their arms at their side, staring straight at each other, having speech. And that is what happens when we just have line after line after line of dialogue. There has to be something going on in the background to make that scene feel more real and make it feel not just tight and claustrophobic and boring. It's boring if there's nothing happening behind them. So to clarify what I mean by this is like, I don't mean there need to be like explosions in the background, but like if you're watching TV, I challenge you guys to watch any show, pick up any show, and I think you will see this, is that the characters always have something to do while they're talking. So like, I've been watching a lot of Big Bang Theory lately, and they are always doing something while they're speaking their lines. So they're either walking up the stairs to their apartment, or they're sitting down and unboxing their food, or they're starting to eat together, or they're at the comic book store flipping through comic books, or, you know, they're in the kitchen cooking dinner. No matter what is like, even if it doesn't matter, if it's just something small in the background, something is happening that makes it so it's they're not just standing stock still staring at each other delivering their lines because that is completely unnatural. It's unnatural on the screen, but it's also I don't think we quite pick up on it because it's written down and, and the visuals are different than what we see on the screen, right? So I think a lot of times we don't realize that that is lacking until we put it in. You know, if you read two scenes back to back and one has that, has peripheral action going on in the background and the other is lacking it, one of them is going to ring a lot more real and a lot more interesting to you than the other one. And this actually ties very strongly back into the first one of personality, because when they have something going on on the side, in the background, they have something to do with their hands, they have something that they're all focusing on while they speak, it actually gives you a lot more to play with when it comes to the personality. So instead of just having things like the expressions on their faces, because if we, if we don't have peripheral stuff, it's kind of difficult to show personality if they're not moving around and being able to interact with anything. All 
you really have is the ability to say like they're smiling or they're frowning. You really are limited if there's not anything happening. But if you have something happening at the same time, so let's say they're all gathered together for a big meal. And so like, you know, you can, you can throw in little tiny tidbits of like somebody passing the potatoes, but you can really insert personality into that. If you have like somebody asks to, for the group to pass the potatoes, it's probably gonna be the most helpful person who passes them, right? So it's almost like a little tidbit of personality slipped into that. And then if you're trying to show that somebody's angry, if you got your moody broody person at this table, they can be like, as they're getting angrier about what something somebody is saying, instead of just having a frown on their face, they can be tightening their grip on the glass. Or they can be like digging their fork into their plate a little bit too hard. Or you know, like there's ways that you can show emotion through action that when you have that peripheral action going on behind the dialogue, it opens so many more doors to show what they're feeling and what they're thinking, um, and really a lot of their personality and who they are, other than just, you know, them standing and talking to each other and being able to smile and frown and shrug their shoulders. Um, there's so much more that opens up when they're doing things. Um, so, and it, it, it could be anything. I mean, Big Bang Theory, they're also like, sometimes they're in the laundry room. Like, it doesn't matter necessarily what it is. Although I will say the, ne the last thing we're gonna talk about is plot and purpose. Um, so every single scene of dialogue needs to be related to your main plot. So if it is just chit chat, cut it out. So like, I do not ever, ever want to hear your characters discussing the weather, unless this is an apocalyptic book about the weather, like destroying the world, that would be relevant. <laughs> but if they just show up and they're, they're chit chatting about nothing, if it's not driving the plot forward, then you could have the best peripheral action. You could have all the personality in the world. It doesn't matter if it is not driving the plot or at least a subplot, at least some sort of conflict in the story is being resolved or moved forward with their dialogue, then it is not dialogue I wanna read. So with that being said, if you can make those peripheral actions that they're doing plot related, it's even better. It's, it's like the best of all worlds. If you can have the peripheral actions that are showing their personality and those actions are related to the plot, yes, it's perfect. So in this case, your peripheral actions, if it has to be plot related, maybe they're all gathered around a map planning out the battle of like, you know, the final climactic moment of the book. So somebody has a pen and they're, they're like drawing on the map and somebody else has action figures that they're pushing across the map. Like give everybody something to focus on and something to do so that like when somebody gets angry, they can shove the map off the table. And then that gives like so much more impact to that scene because everybody was focused on that map and it was really exciting. Or maybe your characters are trying to build something. So maybe they're all working on a project while they deliver their lines of dialogue. I don't know, they're, they're working to fix a car engine because their car is broken down and that is very relevant to the plot. They have to get the car started before the monsters kill them or something, right? So it could be that they're all working on this car engine trying to figure out how it works and you kind of start to see a little of their personalities as one of them is panicking and, and somebody else is getting angry and working a little too hard and pry something else loose in the engine. You know, you can combine all of these three things, the personality, the peripherals, and the plot. That is going to be your best dialogue is when you can have all three of those things totally interconnected. So. Those are really my pro tips that I wanted to give you guys about like structuring your dialogue. If you can go back through your books, if they're already written or if you're in the process of writing them, anytime that your characters are speaking, make sure you have those three things and your book is gonna read awesome. If you have peripheral action going on behind them, if you have personality inserted in the little things they say and the ways they say them, and your dialogue is directly moving your plot forward, then you are on the right track. I'm super proud of you guys. And that is everything I got. So I hope you find that helpful. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And then I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.